So the New York Jets had an alarmingly bad performance last night versus the Los Angeles Chargers. Let's get into it. So yesterday I recorded a reaction to the New York Giants' pathetic loss to the Las Vegas Raiders. And in that video, I mentioned how the Jets have been able to play through adversity unlike the New York Giants have this season. I still, you know, stand by those comments. However, last night was really, really bad. Really, really bad. And it's becoming a trend now that this defense is going to be good. It's going to keep the offense in games. But at the end of the day, the offense is going to be unwatchable sometimes. And the Jets, credit to their defense and their ability to finish games in the last few weeks you know the Giants are pretty pathetic and they almost lost that game but they found a way to win it you know give them credit for that they had that super exciting win versus the Philadelphia Eagles but what won them that game defense a key interception on one of the best quarterbacks in the league so Kansas City was really the only game where the Jets was were able to spread the field out and make some plays offensively. It's clearly uh, Zach Wilson's best game this year at a loss. And even in that game, he had the biggest turnover. Now, I didn't think he was the reason they lost that game. Some people attributed him to the reason why they lost that game. I attributed it to the defense giving up 17 points in the first eight minutes. But Zach Wilson had the biggest fumble of the game, and he took responsibility. And I applauded him for that. And I thought there was a path for him to have not a great season, but just get the Jets at least to the postseason. But last night was nauseating. Nauseating. It's the same thing each week now. Zach Wilson hangs on to the football too long. I saw so many people ripping the offensive line. We knew the offensive line for the Jets wasn't good. Even with four snaps of Aaron Rodgers, you could see that. It's a big reason why Aaron Rodgers got hurt in the first place was that the O-line wasn't good. But they've been able to find ways to win games even without that. Now, obviously, that's most of the defense, but Zach Wilson's been able to make some plays. Here's the problem. Zach Wilson holds on to the ball forever. So when you see the amount of high amount of sacks that happened last night, I counted at least five that I'm like, Zach Wilson, get rid of the football. So the people who are going to defend Zach Wilson, I am not going to defend him here. You can't defend a guy who holds the ball for three and a half plus seconds. Get rid of it. If there's no one open, that's fine. But it looks like he's trying to hang on and hang on and hang on, trying to make a play, trying to make a play. It's exactly what Daniel Jones was doing before Tyrod Taylor came in after Daniel Jones' injury versus the Dolphins. So Zach Wilson's holding on to the football too long. You know what else? They don't really have many offensive targets other than Garrett Wilson. And Brees Hall in the running game. Dalvin Cook is pretty brutal. And Alan Lazard, not very good. Troy Aikman, last night, basically said, yeah, they were expecting Aaron Rodgers to be the quarterback of this team. But in reality, he said, there's still a lot of issues with this offense. And yeah, is it all on Zach Wilson? I never said that. But there's no doubt about it that he's the number one issue with this offense. There's no doubt about it. You can't tell me any otherwise. I mean, a good quarterback can deal with that offensive line problem. He knows when to get rid of the football, right? A target like Garrett Wilson sometimes is all you need. I mean, Daniel Jones had pretty bad targets all of last season, still was able to have a successful year. And Daniel Jones is a slightly above average quarterback, in my opinion. Some people don't even put him at that level. So I look at it. There was also this one play where Zach Wilson could have ran and gained more yards, but he flipped a little pass instead for a short game. And it's plays like that that lead me to believe that he's just thinking too much. And he has moments, man, where it's like this. And sometimes the pressure needs to really be on him. And I wonder if the reason why he played so well in that Kansas City game is because of how brutal the New England game was. I mean, after that Patriots game, we were saying, that, you know, they recently they they signed Trevor Simeon off the seat uh, off the streets, and then Simeon 
you know, is the person like, oh, I'll put him in. Right? I mean, this is a disaster pretty much every week at the quarterback position. And it's so hard to win in the NFL. And the Jets knew this last year. They knew it. And yet they still brought him back. Now, Joe Douglas clearly wants to show that he was right, selecting Zach Wilson with the second overall pick. How's that working out for you, Joe? Not working out very This is his third season. Is it Robert Sala? I believe the kid has talent. The kid was awesome at BYU. He's been brutal to watch. Brutal. And I'm sure there's other factors. But when it comes down to it, he's just not making simple throws. And he's just not executing offensively. And that is a huge problem considering that this defense is so elite. It's Super Bowl-level defense. And they're playing with the worst, like, worst team in the NFL-level offense. No one is scared of Zach Wilson, even with a target like Garrett Wilson. Could you imagine Garrett Wilson coming into this year thinking he was going to play with Aaron freaking Rodgers? And, oh, it's just another year of Zach Wilson. And at the trade deadline, for Joe Douglas to not at least invest a seventh-round, sixth-round pick in a backup quarterback more reliable than Zach Wilson, just in case you have a game like yesterday, well, you need a spark. And Joshua Dobbs gets traded to the Minnesota Vikings after the Kirk Cousins injury for, what, a sixth-rounder? Joshua Dobbs is not going to blow anybody away, but he's – Got some fight in him. He's had some really solid games this year. I mean, if you look at him versus the Giants in week two, it's pretty good. The Cardinals were in a lot of close games this year, despite how terrible they actually are. Would have been nice to at least invest in somebody like that. Would have been nice to at least sign a backup quarterback in the offseason or invest in a backup quarterback to at least compete with Zach Wilson. This man has never competed for a spot, even this year, hasn't competed for a spot. Because in the offseason, Aaron Rodgers was the clear-cut starter. Everybody knew it. Leader of the team. And then he gets hurt in four, four snaps. What did Zach Wilson do to compete and earn that spot? And I, you know, people are saying, sit him, sit him. Who, who are you going to put in? Who are you going to put in? If they're... Continuing to throw out Zach Wilson, I can't imagine it gets much better with their backups. I can't imagine. And we can look at many things yesterday. The Jets did a great job on Justin Herbert. Zach Wilson's fumbling the football. Jets are going three and out. Consistently, always ending in punting. I mean, you watch these broadcasters, and they literally make fun of the amount of punts that are consistently in Jet games. Now, at the end of the first half, the Jets fans were booing the team going into the halftime. And, you know, if you've watched the Jets this year, you've known that they're a second-half team. And it looked like the first few plays in the third quarter, maybe Zach Wilson could maybe pull up another miracle, kind of like what he did in the Giant game. It's some of the worst quarterback play I've seen. And he's really talented. And, you know, maybe in the future, he can be good somewhere else. It doesn't look like it's going to be here, even if Aaron Rodgers comes back. And speaking of Rodgers, the talk of him possibly coming back this year, I'll believe it when I see it. Now, I know he looks good throwing the football in warmups, and that's cool. But at the end of the day, he's going behind that offensive line. One of the worst in the NFL. Maybe he'll be fine. It's very concerning. And it's something that the Jets need to look into. And they were aggressive at the trade deadline looking for 
new players, right? There was rumors they were looking at Adams again. Looking for other targets. How do you not solve the the by far the biggest problem with your team? And that's Zach Wilson. To at least have a backup plan. Because you know you're going to get games like yesterday where the defense at some point in the game just feels deflated. Now, there are times where his targets need to make some plays, make an aggressive catch for a young quarterback. If you saw the Manning cast, Peyton Manning would say things like that. You know, sometimes these these guys just got to catch the ball. Maybe that's the case. But Zach Wilson has been pretty putrid and it's disrespectful to Jets fans. It's disrespectful to some football fans because it looks that bad. It's pretty awful to have a big Monday night football game like that. And the Jets could have been five and three yesterday. It's a bad loss because the Chargers are with three and four. And now they're four and four. And, you know, the Chargers aren't blowing anybody away. Somewhat fraudulent last season. Some people think Justin Herbert's overrated. Are they a well-coached team? I don't think so. So when I look at that game, I'm like, okay, well, they got to they gotta start getting some wins against teams that they're supposed to beat. They were supposed to beat the Chargers yesterday. Now, some people are like, well, the Chargers are overrated, but I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure there. So as far as the Jets go in their division, the Miami Dolphins – who can't be good teams. Patriots who are god awful. And the Buffalo Bills who quite frankly are just disappointing. They're just not the team that we think. So I still think the Jets have a chance in this division. But man is it deflating and nauseating and tiring when you got to see Zach Wilson up. Now do you run out Tim Boyle? You run out Trevor Simeon? Because he can't perform like this next week. He just can't. It's going to feel like last year all over again. Deja vu. And that's not what Jets fans had in store for this season. The Jets have a real shot at the postseason this year. And you're not going to win all games. You're going to have disappointing losses. You're going to have win. It's week to week with the NFL. I mean, a few weeks ago, we were thinking after that Eagles win, and even after the Giants win, right? They didn't play well versus the Giants, but they're four and three. You're like, oh my God, no Aaron Rodgers, four and three. And then they lose this week versus the Chargers, a team that's kind of mediocre. And it's four and four, and Zach Wilson was awful. And you're thinking, oh, now I'm scared again. It's week to week with the NFL. But for the Jets not to have any backup plan, it's if I was a Jets fan, I'd be losing my mind. Now, thankfully, I'm not. But the Giants are even worse. So hopefully the Jets can bounce back next week because last night was sickening.